This is Make It Plain. Make It Plain. M I P. With my Samela Mafumo. Mark Thompson. Make It Plain. Get woke. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Make It Plain. And we have back here with us our dear friend and who has now become the most fearless media commentator we know. So fearless. Even Hillary Clinton (laughs) has endorsed him and has tweeted that she reads pressrun.media every day. I'm telling you, really, you're really missing something. We never thought news covering the news and the media would be as interesting if not more interesting than the, the stuff the media is spewing itself. Eric Bollard of PressRun.media joins us once again on Make It Plain. Congratulations, man. Hey, um, thanks. You have another Democrat who ran for president and won the popular vote endorsing Press Run. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> that was very, very exciting. Yeah. Well, no, that's great. Congratulations. Thanks. Um, um, on that. Um, so, uh, uh, what's his name? Geraldo. <laughs> well, let's, let's do this. Let's, yeah. let's, let's just take a listen together and then get your reaction. Uh, he's supposed to be in the media himself. Take a listen, y'all. I think I had an idea, uh, you know, uh, when with the world so divided and everybody, you know, telling him he's got to give up and time to leave and uh, time to transition and all the rest of it. Why not name the vaccine the Trump? Uh, you know, make it like, have you gotten your Trump yet? <laughs> no, it would be a nice gesture to him. And years from now, it would become just a, a kind of a generic name. Have you uh, got your Trump yet? Oh, yeah, I got my Trump. I'm fine. Uh, you know, I, I wish we could honor him in that way because he is definitely the prime architect of this Operation Warp Speed. And and but for him, uh, we'd still be waiting, uh, you know, into the grim winter for uh, uh, for these amazing, uh, miraculous medical breakthroughs. So let's talk. About- so so name the vaccine. Yeah. Trump. In honor of him. And obviously, folks, that's on Fox News. Um, that's pretty grotesque, considering we've all been trumped, first of all, by his inaction on the virus. And you and I talked about this before. If this were a Democrat, are you going to pack the court? When are you going to free the hostages? You know, when are you going to release the emails? Oh, A quarter million people infected, thousands dead. But that's just okay. The uh, I've actually gone back and looked at the uh, Ebola coverage over when Obama was president. Uh, Mm -hmm. Two Americans died and and neither of them were infected in the United States. And the level of hysteria uh, of that coverage and the predictions that it was basically going to end Obama's political career. Uh, because there were two deaths. This was all during the run-up to the midterm elections. The Republicans were were playing Ebola hard and the press just played along every day. It is, it is mind boggling to see what the, what the press did to Obama when two people died of Ebola. So grotesque is a perfect word for this Geraldo thing. I mean, there's so many layers uh, of, of that in in terms of what's going on. A quarter of a million are dead. CDC predicts we'll have another 40,000 dead by early December, not not the end of the year, early December. It'll be 300,000 dead um, by the end of the year. It'll be half a million dead before this vaccine arrives. And Geraldo Rivera goes on TV and wants to toast Donald Trump. And and the other grotesque part, this is all part of this weird uh, campaign to kind of coerce him out of the White House. You know, how can we make him how can we make him feel better about himself? So he'll leave. So he won't destroy free and fair elections in this country. How can we how can we appeal to his uh, egomania in a way that uh, we can kind of, co- you know, coerce him to say, oh, I think I'm done. I mean, it's on, on so many levels. And of course, the punchline is Geraldo is supposed to be occasionally, you know, a voice of, quote, sanity on Fox News. Uh, he has been critical of this attempt to steal the election, although he doesn't call it stealing the election. He just says, well, there's no evidence. You know, we, where's the, where's the evidence for all these votes they're going to get? 
But to suggest we should honor Trump, who since the election has not answered a single question from reporters, who we know has not attended a COVID task force in five months. So he has checked out. He is, I, I think, deliberately letting this pandemic just run wild. This is his kind of F you to the country for not reelecting him, saying, I, I don't care. Do, what you, do whatever you want to do. I'm not interested. I don't care that we're going to have 300,000 dead Americans by the end of the year. So it's it's all part of this cult, obviously, that happens on Fox News. Um, they're the reason we're in this mess. They have convinced this country that masks are political, that the whole thing is a hoax, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, the, the Geraldo clip is kind of a, a perfect, as you say, grotesque encapsulation in terms of what's going on, the idea that we would honor someone who from day one basically gave a stand down order for this virus invasion um, is really kind of remarkable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you critiqued the New York Times' interview with Kevin McCarthy. Yeah. Um, and you use the word normalize, yeah. um, uh, uh, Eric. Um, and that's really what's been going on, it hasn't it been? Yeah, they, so they had a Q&A with Kevin McCarthy, you know, minority leader of the House, who is out front saying, we don't know who won this election. Trump might win it. You know, uh, I don't know if he's used the phrase steal election, but he's just been insanely irresponsible. He, he Remember after the election, you know, a lot of these pundits were saying, well, you know, these Republican leaders are going to go to the White House. They're going to have the talk with Trump and explain, mm -hmm. you know, he didn't win. This is what we do. He's he, supposedly he's one of the people that was going to do that. <laughs> and he's been just as awful as everyone else. So the New York Times sits down with a Q&A form it, while Trump is reaching out to Michigan legislatures, trying to get him to throw out black votes in Detroit, trying to get him to not certify an election. This is straight out of Hungary and Poland and Turkey. I mean, these, these are what country, these are what authoritarians do in, in, in countries like that. Still, the New York Times sits down with the minority leader, not one sentence about how the current Republican president is actively and blatantly trying to steal an election. It, it, the whole interview was, oh, gosh, you guys did so well in the House in the midterms. Uh, gee, you know, you probably could have gone on the offensive more. What's your polling showing for 20? It was pure process. You would think John McCain were president. You would think Mitt Romney were president uh, by the tone of this interview. So, you know, the, the press continues to give the entire Republican Party a pass on on this unprecedented attack on free and fair elections. They're, they're, they are being tougher on Trump, uh, but they still don't use the word coup. They still don't use the word steal the election. They still don't use the word traitor. Um, and the Republican Party, they're, they've been erased from this whole equation, even though if, if the only reason Trump is able to do any of this is because ha he has the tacit silent support of the Republican Party, who's too afraid to stand up to this madman, which has been true for five years, obviously. And, and the, the press, the Bellway press being unwilling to um, cover it objectively, um, they've even been talking to Trump supporters. You've asked the question, who cares <laughs> <laughs> about that um, and about them? I mean, it's, it's so between that. Yeah. Um, but between and the New York Times headline, what is it? Kevin McCarthy uh, says Trump is not going to go away or something like that. Yeah, he was he was excited about that idea. Right. He's trying. Trump's trying to steal this election. And the theme of the article was Trump's going to be really important for us, for the Republican Party. And the reporter doesn't raise the obvious question of, is that a good thing? Do you, are you a lawless party? Um, last week I wrote about how CNN did a, did a news story uh, and suggested in the news story, the Republicans, quote, had no choice but to go along with Trump in his attempt to steal the election, subvert the election, raise questions about the integrity. Uh, they had no choice because, um, you know, Trump's base is so active. And, and, and if they if they, you know, didn't want to be primaried, you know, or face, uh, you know, an opponent, a, a far right wing opponent, they had no choice. I mean, I don't remember 
you know, during Watergate, the, the press suggesting Republicans had no choice but to support Richard Nixon's criminality because, you know, when Watergate first broke, he was still very popular. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. a completely amoral look at the way politics works. Political last piece last week did a piece saying, well, this just looks like bad sportsmanship. This isn't really a, a, a problem. This is just Trump being Trump. Um, so that that's that's a problem. And then the uh, right. The, the so the. The Trump voters, I think the New York Times since Election Day has done six, seven articles about Trump voters. What do they think? Who do they support? They put one uh, Biden voter story on the front page. And it was about how black voters don't aren't really excited about Joe Biden. <laughs> that right. was the thing. That right. was the I remember. And they literally not only got him nominated, got him elected, flipped Georgia. And the New York Times first and only Biden voter story I've seen since he got almost 80 million votes was the idea. Well, you know, his base isn't really excited about him, but oh my gosh, that Trump base. Oh, let's go interview them in Ohio. Let's they'll, they'll tell us how what's really important in American politics has the losing candidate has never, <laughs> the press has never cared about the losing candidate. He's never cared about the supporters uh, of losing candidates. Hillary, right. Hillary supporters got erased. They got erased while she was running, and they certainly got erased after she lost. Yeah. I think yep. anyone cared about Al Gore supporters? And I mean, this is, once again, uh, the press is just inventing out of whole cloth this, this news beat. Uh, they've been wed to it for four years, and they are just not going to let it go. You know, these are just hardworking people. There's nothing, you know, racist or xenophobic or dark. There are no dark undercurrents. These are just, this is the... You know, the, they treat him like the silent majority uh, for four years, and they're clearly not. I mean, Trump lost by five million votes. You know, Biden flipped five states on Election Day. Um, but they just don't seem to be that interested in that that brown, black and white coalition that's that's been created. Um, and we know the new we've discussed before the New York Times trying is trying to sustain its bottom line, sell subscriptions to that base, um, one, but it's ridiculous because Trump is maligning the New York times to the base. Yeah. So that doesn't make it. So you kissing up to a base that that's really that's never going to accept complete. the New York times. Right. And then the question is, you know, for the beltway media to say Republicans don't have a choice, Yeah. but it's as if the beltway media is admitting they don't have a choice either. I don't understand why they don't have a choice, uh, but to normalize all of this and cover it. And, and you're right, Eric, I, I was looking back and this goes back. I know it's impolite to say anything um, necessarily negative about John McCain these days. But remember, after 2008, um, he lost. Right. John McCain was on the Sunday morning talk shows, every oh. one of them, every oh. single Sunday. Nonstop. We never saw um, uh, Jimmy Carter no, right. on, on a Sunday morning talk show when he lost. Walter Mondale on a Sunday morning talk show when he lost. Michael Dukakis on a Sunday morning talk show. John Kerry, Al Gore, right. Hillary Clinton. When you, when you're a Democrat and you lose, right. that's the end of it. You don't get any more coverage. Nor, and as you said, nor do your supporters. But a Republican loses. We saw it with, with, with John McCain. He even tried to you know, uh, I remember when Bob Dole became a meme, he lost and started making commercials. It was adorable mm -hmm. Do Bob Dole, you know, but when it's a Democrat, oh, no, no, no. We don't even want any part of that. It, it, it's that's the that's the media. And and well, I think it's time to admit what they really do. Well, and, and it's even worse than that, because you think about, um, you know, when Obama won 2008, I, you know, I went back and I looked at uh, looked at the the coverage and there were no Obama voter stories in, in early 2009. They didn't send reporters down to Baltimore and Atlanta and Chicago. In fact, what was the dominant story in March, April, May of 2009, the tea party, the anti Obama movement, the right wing haters, that's who the press focused on. So we had a, we had a Democrat win a landslide and the press focused on his critics. We had Trump lose the popular vote and we had the press focus on his supporters for four years. <laughs> and now 
Trump loses by 5 million. The press is focused on his supporters. I mean, we see this continuum. Democratic voters are just of no interest uh, to the most of the Beltway press and really the Democratic Party. I mean, the Republican Party is seen as being super savvy. They're the ones who right. run the city. They're the, run who, they're the ones who run the agenda. And their supporters, their white supporters, are the most important voters in America. That has been the, that has been the message for five years. And it hasn't changed since, since Trump lost by five million votes. So, so just to just to be clear, you just said his white support is white people are the most important people in America. I think that's what oh, you yeah. said. Absolutely. So, that, that has been the news, message. y'all. That has been okay. the message nonstop. <laughs> this is this is what does not change um, um, about America. And, and, and just real quick, even more specific, it's, it's white working class Midwestern voters who are the most important voices in America. That has been the message nonstop for five years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you are also making the case that the Biden White House should expel Fox. Right? Yeah. I mean, in terms of credentials, I, I don't see... I mean, Trump White House has turned the press briefing room into a joke. They have Gateway Pundit. They have OAN. They have all these conspiracy nuts. So Biden has to come in and obviously fumigate all that. You know, there's no more day passes for these right wing nut jobs who turn these briefings into kind of a farce by basically asking questions in the form of Trump talking points. Uh, but I, yeah, I think it's time to get rid of Fox News. Why, why are we going to why is the Democratic administration going to legitimize them with, with press credentials. You know, Obama, you know, when he first came into office, uh, they put up a, 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 they tried to put up a fight and they said, we're not, you know, this is a propaganda arm. We're not going to treat them like a news organization. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got absolutely steamrolled by the Beltway press. I mean, there was a revolt on behalf of Fox news. Uh, you, how can you do that? Why is the white house criticizing a news outlet? Uh, and, and one of uh, Obama's um, advisors this week wrote a really good piece saying, you know, we lost our nerve. And, you know, honestly, in the scheme of things, you know, the economy was uh, being destroyed. They had to bail out the, the auto. And there was a lot going on when Obama took over. So I think they decided, you know, what, we're not going to fight this fight for Fox yeah. News. Yeah. Uh, fast, fast forward 12 years. It's, you know, and the argument then was, well, Fox, you know, Fox during the day is really serious. All our friends work at Fox. They're really good people. We know them. Why are you going to, you know, attack? Yes, you know, at that at that point, Bill O'Reilly at night. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're serious people. Uh, after watching Fox News lie about a pandemic for this entire year, watching them, uh, um, again, attack free and fair elections, it, it's virtually impossible. CNN has even been much more aggressive. Um calling out Fox News, uh, it's almost impo- it's virtually impossible to make the argument that they're, a, they're a, not even not only a, a serious news organization, they're not even a news organization. Mm-hmm. Um, so at the, that point, what, what's the point of having them in the press briefing? You know, uh, part of the problem is we're not with our politics and our in our discussions. We're not having an honest discussion about what Fox News is. Uh, and and one way you can have that honest discussion is just say, you know, what this your propaganda. Uh, that's great. Good luck, Murdoch. Go make a lot of money. But we're not going to give you the trappings. We're not going to give you the credentials. We're not going to give you the legitimacy. We're not going to do that on our watch. Having said all that, I'd be I'd be shocked if the Biden administration did it. But this is a way this is what Democrats have to do. Uh, I've been making that argument for a long time. But again, I think 2020 was just such a radical um, break from reality for Fox News again, you know, to lie about a public health crisis every day for 10 months. Uh, to me, that 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 ends your <laughs> any any claim you have to being um, allowed inside the White House and ask questions and things like that. There are even some making the argument that there may be grounds for a class action. Oh, yeah. Right. Like Fox, that. You know, yeah, because they've been actively telling people don't wear masks, don't yeah. do this. Oh, oh, you know, they've I mean, I how many millions of how many cases does America have now? 12, 11 million, 12 million cases. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Fox News is infected. I used to say thousands. I don't know. They've 
indirectly maybe infected a million people. They've killed thousands. There's no question. Um, uh, if you, if, I mean, look at their age demographic. I mean, the average, average uh, viewer is what, 62, 64 years. I mean, they are right in the COVID, you know, uh, wheelhouse, uh, uh, you know, uh, of, uh, you add in a couple of health issues, health problems. Uh, I mean, thousands have died. Thousands of their viewers have died. Uh, because, you know, Laura Ingram still says, you know, don't wear a mask. It's a joke. Um, so, yeah. And again, I think once you go down that road, this is new. Fox News has never, it, it, you know, killed as many people as they have this year. Um, so I think it's the perfect time to to make a declaration and just say, you know what, go go do your thing. Oh, and the other point and, and the other quick point is. You know, it's very it is very interesting. Fox News is under real, you know, marketplace pressure during this, you know, fake recount or fake whatever is going on. Uh, they're being outflanked by uh, outlets like Newsmax and OAN and things like that, who are just going all in that, you know, the election was stolen. Fox News isn't doing that 24 seven. They're losing some of their viewers. So I think with the Biden administration, they're just going to they're going to go bonkers <laughs> on the Biden administrations just to prove the right wing bona fides. So anyone who thinks, you know, uh, you know, Fox News might turn the page with the Biden administration, uh, I think it's going to be the opposite. I think they're just going to go berserk. Why do you think they're letting OANN and Newsmax outflank uh, them? Very interesting. Murdoch is Murdoch made a decision to two and a half weeks ago, right after the election. <clears throat> and it's not just Fox News. You know, the New York Post has been critical. Uh, Wall Street Journal editorial page has been critical. Carl Rove had a column saying, you know, politely saying this whole thing is a joke. Um, Fox News continues um, to give some, you know, some uh, Trump lawyers a hard time. So this is from the top down automatically. This this is all Murdoch. For whatever reason, he's decided he's not going to go down that road. Uh, and it's hurting them. There's, there's no question they are losing some viewers. In the end, Fox News doesn't make most of its money on advertising. They make most of their money on their cable fees. So, you know, if they lose 80,000 viewers to Newsmax in a week, it doesn't, they don't care. Right. And, and they're going to be back. But to answer your question, the reason they did it is Murdoch. Uh, and it just shows how he, how he um, kind of lays down the law. It, it's, it, there's no way it's a coincidence. All three of his American uh, media properties at the same time uh, are sending the same message to Trump. And they're they're almost kind of comical to to read, particularly the Wall Street Journal editorials, which still think they can reason with this madman and kind of <laughs> coax him out the door. Obviously, it's not going to happen. But yeah, uh, Murdoch made that call. And so far, they're sticking with it. And and it's hurting them. And, uh, and uh, I, you know, I'm sure Murdoch is just praying for this thing, it all to be over. Uh, because uh, I, I don't think they like being in this position. They they have very rarely, like I said, been outflanked by the far, far right. And uh, it's definitely happening now. So how do you think the media is going to cover um, what we're hearing? There's, apparently there's going to be some effort to get um, electors to be faithless. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, Dershowitz even suggesting this could go to Supreme Court. They still have something up their sleeve. I don't see yeah. going anywhere. But what do you think about that? You think they'll, some of these same media will be inclined to try to, um, if that were to happen, inclined to try to normalize that or treat it seriously? You know, I think the, that coverage has been pretty good. I mean, if you look at the New York Times today, they're using fairly strong language about this being unprecedented and, and, and a power grab. But, you know, they're still not using words like, you know, treason and sedition and, and stealing an election, which is an, or authoritarian. How can you watch what Trump's doing and, and just not call him an authoritarian as a matter of fact? Like I said earlier, I mean, this is just this is just straight out of Hungary and Poland and Turkey and, and, and let alone Russia. Uh, it's just absolutely textbook to not accept the, the results of election, delay it, uh, come up with fake um you know, lawsuits. I, I, this is just, this is authoritarianism 101. But the, the press will never call him that. You can't call a white Republican man an, an autocrat, uh, you know. So 
I, I, and, and, you know, let's face it, this is an easy call for the, for the press. I mean, that Giuliani debacle fiasco circus, whatever that was yesterday, there, there's nobody with an eighth grade education who, who would look at that and say, oh, you know, these are serious people. So it's, it's, it's a, like I said, it's, it's a very easy call for the press to make, but they still won't really use the words that are important. Um, uh, and, 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 and that are accurate. And, you know, they shot, you know, they haven't called him a liar for four years. They won't call him a racist. They won't call him a stable. Um, but just a, you know, a quick point, you know, you know, the, the Trump team is Owen or one in 30 in the court cases. They've been laughed out of courses, courts across the country, uh, that, that Giuliani car wreck yesterday. So in a way, you, you know, I don't think we chuckle because it's all serious, but in a way it does seem like a farce, but imagine if this was just one state, imagine if this was just Michigan and they just had to get Michigan and it was 5,000 votes, we would be on the precipice of God knows what, because there are absolutely state legislators in Michigan who would be willing to throw out black votes in Detroit and give this thing to Trump. So, you know, I think a lot of us are kind of, you know, calm and resolved and we realize the math doesn't work. But like I said, if this had come down to one close state, I, I'm not sure that we would still yeah. have a democracy. Yeah, no, and, and we'd still be there. Just like, I mean, people, Trump is so bad, people have somehow um, forgiven W. Yeah. But we, we were in this, in a very similar position. For Florida. In yeah. 2000. Yeah. And there was no love lost for him. We knew what he was doing. He yeah. did not win that election. That they they cheated, yep. um, and and they stole that one, um, as as well. Um, but yeah, it it's 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 interesting watching some of the coverage, and and you have to wonder, you know, what they're going to end up doing with it. But you're right; they haven't they haven't been emphatic about his lying, his right. racism, the Beltway media. That is so. So, Eric, what what's Nick? What what are you looking at now in the days ahead? Or what are you anticipating in terms of what the mainstream media might be doing? Well, in terms of this this election nonsense, I mean, it, this is going to drag on to de- early December because that's when states th- their deadline for certifying. Um, so, you know, Trump's just going to keep drawing this out. He's going to be a hermit in the White House. You know, the the one of the hallmark failures of the press is not for four years has been failing to ring that loud alarm bell, whether it was, you know, Russia interference, whether it was um, the, just the blatant corruption. Uh, but they know what's going on. They know this is all historic and dangerous, but they, they have kind of tiptoed around the language uh, and they just haven't, they haven't really wanted to be, open and honest about what's going on. And, and, and I think we're seeing that still uh, with this election nonsense. Every, you know, every headline writer in America knows what's going on, but those aren't the headlines we see. Uh, you know, authoritarian yeah. Trump trying to steal election. I mean, that's just the fact. He's not even hiding it. And that's, and that's the weird punchline of all this. He's never tried to hide anything. He's never tried to hide the fact that he's a pathological liar or a racist or anything. And the press sees it and they know it and he knows it. And then there's this game of, well, let's not say it. And, and we're still, look, I think the, I think the coverage is generally being good. I think they're emphasizing he has absolutely no path, but let's then, then fine. Let's just be honest. Let's just give us the headlines that we're talking about. Let's why sugarcoat this to the very last days. And, and if, this if they were covering a third world country or third uh, world dictatorship absolutely i mean that would be the story um what's your assessment of how the transition is or isn't being covered i i have you know my sources are telling me that even the pick the presidential inaugural committee has not met yeah because they don't have space and and part of uh, what the GSA is supposed to sign off on is even space for the inaugural committee. Now they've told me, they said, well, remember Mark, we speaking of 2000, it was the same thing. We only had a couple of weeks to put inaugura- inauguration together. Cause we didn't know who won right, under right. The Supreme court rule, but they've not even met and finalized plans as to whether or not there'll be a 
safe or socially distant ceremony or just what it's or just what it's going to be because the woman at the GSA won't uh, ascertain right the 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 results you you ascertain i we all we can ascertain it right here we know what especially after georgia yeah he beat him in georgia too not just one time he beat him in georgia twice like two thousand votes. <laughs> votes um so yeah in florida uh, right now we actually didn't know we know now th- this delay uh, I, I was tweeting about this awful cnn piece about the the gsa administrator uh who will not release the funds who will not say the Biden won. Uh, CNN just did this awful piece saying how she's caught in the middle and she's such a conscientious person, uh, quoted virtually no Democrats. They quoted her friends saying about how honorable she is. And gosh, she just wishes she weren't, weren't in this position. Uh, it's just mind boggling. I mean, everyone knows what's going on. They've they've interviewed former GSA you know, heads. They all said, oh, of course, Biden won. What are we doing? Uh, she's a Trump loyalist. She's trying to gum up the works. And, and she gets this fawning, you know, uh, a puff piece from CNN. Um, she, and they didn't even get access to her. They got access to her anonymous friends. I'm like, what, come, what are we doing? I mean, you talk about normalizing. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, th- I think the transition coverage is a lot like the other coverage. And that it's, you know, this is all this is all off the rails. Uh, but well, you know, they're just caught in tough positions. They, you know, they're doing their best, you know, hopefully it'll all work out. That's, that's kind of the tone. And we're dealing with a pandemic and we're dealing with Trump administration refusing to share medical and, 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 uh, you know, information with the new administration. Uh, I mean, that, that's, people are going to die, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> and, they are. And, and they don't care. Yeah. Well, um, folks, be sure if you have not yet, we ask you to please. It is worth your while to check out PressRun.media and to subscribe. And it'll keep that third eye um, that we have, that you all have functioning. Sometimes we don't use that third eye enough and we don't use it. It gets calcified. Um <laughs> Uh, 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 Eric is is helping us keep that third eye open so we can look at this coverage, all of this coverage with a discerning eye. Pressrun.media. Eric, as always, uh, thank you. Uh, safety and peace and uh, happy holidays to you and yours. Thanks. I appreciate you too, Mark. Be safe. Oh, thank you, man. Thanks for getting woke and listening to Make It Plain. Please remember to listen, like, subscribe, and wherever you get your podcasts, please give the show a five-star rating. And please do spread the word. Let's all continue to pray for each other during this pandemic and this police-demic. If all hearts and minds are clear, it has been May Play. Play.